Okay, so on 21, the presence of crystals is crystal urea. And in horses and rabbits, you tend to see, let me move, sorry, my little arrow is being, your calcium carbonate, um, which are the dumbbell shaped, so the calcium carbonate, um, and these are the dumbbell shapes. But if I tell you that they're found in horses and rabbits, do I expect them to be an alkaline urine or acidic urine? What type of Al urine? Oh, alkaline? Yes, so you're going to have, yeah, because they eat a primary plant based diet. So, and you know, you've got herbivores, they're going to tend to have a more. So, if you find that crystal in those species, then it tends to populate more in alkaline urine versus acidic urine. Um, this crystal is known as magnesium, ammonium, phosphate, or triple phosphate. If you go back to our, sorry, Let's go back to the slide. So this would be your struvite crystals. Um, so struvites can be triple phosphate versus um, ammonium phosphate. But this is also alkaline, but these are the coffin lids and they're probably the most common crystal. Okay, I see you wrote alkaline too, thank you. Um, and so this would be your struvite. Um, normal urine, I'm going back here to, and if there's, is there a question on the crystals? Okay. Um, normal urine collected by system synthesis is considered sterile. Uh, I mean, you do your best, you, you clean it, but that is going to be your most, your sterile, most clean type of uh, sample collection. And that's preferred if you're going to do a culture. If you suspect that the doctor will want a culture, that the owner will want a culture, then that's going to be your best bet. Um, for 25, blank uroliths are seen mostly in Dalmatians. Now these are your, let me go through your, uh, not the calcium oxalate, this is the, uh, uh, your calcium oxalate are your little X ones and the monohydrates are the um, ones that look like an X. And remember you've got the, um, X formation, sorry. These are your uric acid. Um, uric acid um, crystals or urate, ur uroliths, I'm sorry. Uric acid crystals tend to lead to the urate uroliths. So for 25, it's urate uroliths. Um, but what you would see on a urinalysis is you would find the uric acid crystals. If you find these crystals, then you may have to look on radiographs to see if you see the stones. So that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for the stone, um, but usually the crystals are kind of like seen first and then you look for the stones. Um, and that would be that type. Um, be detailed and list the steps to prepare urine for a microscopic examination. Um, whoops, sorry, I'm going to I think I'm Zoom deficient today, so I apologize. Go back to, I'm not trying to give anybody a seizure looking at me flashing through these slides. Um, okay, so on this slide for the procedure, it goes through how do we want to prepare. So, um, if we're going to, you know, you first want to get a good amount of urine, at least five to 10 mils. And again, I've done sediments off of less, but, you know, sometimes that's all you get. But ideally, the more you and urine you get, it's a better representation. Um, and then you're going to centrifuge at least three to five minutes on low speed. Because um, again, we don't want to kind of cause any disruption in the crystals or the cells that could potentially be present. Um, and then 
you pour off what's called your supernatant, leave a little bit of just a little bit of that. And usually at the bottom of that tube is your sediment. You can add a drop of SETI stain and then mix it together. Or like I said, if you decide you don't want to SETI stain, then you know you would just resuspend it and put it on the slide. I've, I've seen some people put it on the slide and then put the drop of SETI stain, but you get a better mix if you put it in the tube before you resuspend your sediment. Um, then you get better mixing of the stain with the components. Um, urine collected by which method is best for microscopic examination? That again is going to be a cysto um, because a cystocentesis should be the cleanest. When you have free catch, you tend to have more debris, um, you know, and potentially get amorphous debris, which sometimes urine drags stuff out. And then if you do a catheter, you tend to have more cells, which may not be representative of cells that were in the bladder. So again, cysto is going to be the preferred um, method for that. Um, so obviously I, you know, I'll look at your pictures that you drew because you're, you know, so there's pictures in there, you know, your struvite, your struvites are the coffin lids, your calcium oxalates are this like more of a square, not a rectangle and have the X. Um, and then you've got the oxalate, which are like a little bit longer. So, or the monohydrate versus the oxalate. So I'll look at your pictures, but be familiar with the pictures of the crystals. Why would you find ketones in the urine? So if I go back to your chemical properties, um, and we go down here, so on the gray box below, so an animal that's potentially eating a high fat diet, so finding out, that's why part of the history is what is your animal eating? Um, if they've been fasted, um, if they're, when we say starving, maybe if they're anorexic or they have a disease process that is starving the body, meaning the body is accessing too much of the body stores, potentially liver problems um, sometimes. But we also think of, you know, it's deranged energy metabolism. So if there was a metabolism disorder where the body is metabolizing the fat instead of the glucose. Now, sometimes in diabetics, they'll go into ketoacidosis where they are metabolizing that fat because they can't access the glucose and then they're gonna have ketone formation. Um, so it's in those situations that we tend to see ketones. But a normal urine should be ketone negative. Um, and I'm sure if you find some of the, some of the ketones, you may notice some of this in the physical exam and in your history. Um, herbivores for number 30 should have an alkaline urine. Um, let me go back to this. Our carnivores, sorry, I'm going to the wrong slide. Let me go back to. Oh, hang on, I'm trying to get to your slide. Oh, these are the little tips. Don't forget like tips to getting the urine, expressing the bladder. And this part in the beginning of the PowerPoint goes over the pros and cons of catheterization versus cystocentesis um, versus, you know, like a free catch. Um, when we evaluate pH, and we look at what they're eating, you know, your carnivores and your, herb your herbivores are always usually gonna be the most alkaline. Um, and on this slide, we go into pH herbivores and right underneath here, uh, where is it right here? Okay. Um, so herbivores, alkaline, omnivores, and carnivores can be basic to alkaline. But your herbivores, if you're ranking them, um, omnivores can have, um, what am I trying to say here? 
depending on the type of pH, can be more alkaline. But you know, an omnivore, since they can eat both, it's going to depend on what the diet what the diet has more of. You know, so depending on you know how much grain, how much plant, you know, so omnivores will vary because within that diet, it can it can vary. But your herbivores are going to have the more alkaline. Carnivores are going to have your more base to alkaline, and then an omnivore can be more alkaline, depending on the diet, but not more than an herb. If you were comparing an herbivore, it would be more alkaline. Oh, I'm stumbling over myself today. Okay. Um, let me go through. Um, now, remember on this picture, if you saw a picture of this, how could you determine the specific gravity? Well, again, remember on the right, you have UG. Um, and then you've got these numbers, which you would just add to the 1.0. If it was here, 1.005. This one is 1.023. Um, you don't want to use the left as if you were measuring total protein um, in a serum sample. Um, let me go back to, and we know these are your normals as far as urine specific gravity, um, kind of right in the middle range. The higher it is, the more concentrated, the more yellow um, that we expect that urine to be. Um, and again, kind of by looking at it, you're, you know, you're always going to use your refractometer versus your reagent strip because your reagent strip will give you a specific gravity, but the most accurate will be with the refractometer. Sorry. Um, And be familiar with what your colors tell you. Obviously, if it's normal, yellowy color, obviously grades of light yellow, dark yellow. Um, and then if you're getting into yellow to yellow brown, when you start to get into brown, we worry about uh, bilirubin. We also worry about myoglobin. Um, and red to brown, obviously, is going to be, you know, bright red is hematuria. Um, but if it tends to be reddish brown, we can get into the hemoglobinuria, um, which will be backed up with your dipstick. Um, these are just things that you can anticipate. And then I didn't talk about um, clarity, but a lot of times what I do if I'm looking at a urine is I will hold it up to like a print. So if this was like the lab form and you hold up, can you see through it? Um, so that's what we're looking at. So, you know, obviously the more clear the urine, um, there's going to be a less of a population of cells and crystals. When you get a lot of crystals, you get a lot of cells. And if we get like lots of casts and then we start, definitely we're more cloudy. So a cloudy sample, you're, you're probably expecting a pretty decent sediment. The clearer samples, you may have very minimal. Doesn't mean you won't have anything on your sediment. So I don't think I talked about clarity, um, but that's an important thing to assess before you do anything is, you know, is it cloudy, is it clear? Um, and the other thing that I mentioned, I didn't get into, obviously odor. Um, you know, sometimes you will notice an odor that you can put that on the form or, you know, to make some type of a note in the record. Um, and then talking about, just be familiar with these terms, you know, frequent urination, a decreased oliguria, and anuria is no urination. And again, anuria, that animal, that would be very strange to have no urine. Sometimes owners just, like again, if they're a low squatter, but you know, not an animal that is blocked, is going to be extremely painful and distressed. If they have a ruptured bladder, it could be that, and that's another rare occurrence, but it could be going into the abdomen, and that's why they're not urinating. But a lot of times when they're not urinating, somehow that animal is getting urine out. The owner just hasn't figured out, you know, missed it, it's in the carpet, or, you know, something like that. Um, 
So think about things that do affect urine production, urine volume. Um, obviously, you know, dehydration, if they're not drinking. Um, if they're drinking a lot, hopefully the owner says they are polyuric because um, that those should go together. Um, let me go back to... Um, Okay. Okay, and there's the pros and cons of those. Let me go back to, are there any questions on urine? Okay. Oops, let me move this. See if I can pull up the other. Um, nope. Um, Okay. Oops. There we go. That's what I'm wow, my computer is major. Okay, just to review some stuff about the VTNE, um, and this was the sheet that we went over. Um, so when you're talking about, we went over these last week, but just to review. Um, if you're talking about the VTNE national exam, that was the AAVSB website, which is the general test website. Um, and then if you're talking about Indiana, it's the indiana.gov slash PLA, and that's the professional licensing agency. So, which will give you the specifics. And if any of you are thinking of going out of state, then if you go to the AAVSB website, there was a link where you could drop down the different states and then you could go to that state's site and it would tell you do they most states take the national exam and then they'll tell you how you get registered in that state so obviously we're focusing on indiana but if any of you are looking outside of um, indiana that's how you would find it um, currently 330 dollars and i'm not really going to ask you about your window um, obviously you'll have your first window to take it and then if you if you don't pass then you could find out your next window which I think you have to waste or wait at least eight weeks before you can take it again um, and then you find out you know right after you take it you'll find out your results and I do believe it takes between four and six weeks if you want a detailed report. I had asked Gillis, I said, do they get a report, a breakdown if they pass? And she did not know. She knows if you don't pass, they'll give you a breakdown of your domains and where your answers lied or where you need to improve. Um, you know, when you talk about the exam, um, you find out right away it's three hours um, and unfortunately I don't want to stress people out it does have a timer but three hours to take it <coughs> and you will have that timer to keep you know track um, what you need to bring with you obviously you know your identification I'm not you know but basically make sure you get there 30 minutes early talked about bringing your photo ID um, but making sure everything is registered, plenty, give yourself plenty of time to make sure everything's registered ahead of time. Um, and I'm not going to ask you the percentages of the domains, just be familiar with the domains that were here, which was the pharmacy, surgical nursing, dentistry, um, lab procedures, animal care, diagnostic imaging, anesthesia, emergency, and then pain management. 
So hopefully we, you know, we've already went over these, but I'm just um, reviewing. And 170 questions total. Um, and then this, for number 11, I just also remember you have to take the jurisprudence exam. So once you pass your national board exam um, to get fully registered in the state, then you would take your jurisprudence. So that would be after. You don't take those at the same time. Um, and then the Indiana exam is short, you know, 30 true and false, multiple choice questions about the law. So just some kind of, just be familiar with some of the simple questions about this. Um, I will have the test open tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna send an email because I'm gonna try to put it on Moodle tonight. If I'm having trouble, I might put it on Teacherese, but I will tell you, I'm really trying to use Moodle. Um, and I just haven't had a whole lot of time just going back and forth and being kind of crazy to play with the grade book. So that's what I wanna do. Is there any way you could open it earlier? Um, I could possibly open it. It depends on how it goes tonight entering it. <laughs> um, what are, what time are you talking? Cause I didn't necessarily have a specific 